do I know if my pelvic floor is weak? Is the question that I'm asked often. I've done a blog on that and it's, it's a more of a complex question to answer. And so I'll try to summarize as much as I can. Your pelvic floor does not reside by itself. It is connected to the pelvic wall on the inside and that provides a double support for your pelvis. It works with the muscles that are connected from the outside to the pelvis. So when it comes to the weakness of pelvic floor, I can assure you that the problem did not just stay with the floor. So there are certain presentations that you can have and majority of times people say, well, I sneeze and I pee comes out or I laugh and I leak a little bit or I exercise and I leak a little bit. There are certain medications that can actually cause weakness of it. I'm excluding all of those. I'm talking about functionality of the muscles as a result of the performance. But here's the surprise for you. The, when it comes to weakness or tightness of the muscles inside your pelvis, those are not the only ways that you know you have a weakness or an imbalance in those muscles. You also can have issues with back pain, issues with kyphosis, too much of a slouch. You can have issues with sacroiliac pain, your pelvis itself. You can have issues with hip mobility, meaning where your lower extremities are connected to your pelvis. You can have tight adductors, inner thighs. You can have weak outside your gluteus medius performance. You can have knee issues because those muscles, adductors and gluteus medius together support and stabilize or play a role in stability of the knees. And when they are weak and they don't work together, you will have instability in the knees, which means ankles and feet as well. So poor posture does play a role. You cannot have weak pelvic floor in isolation. So that's the general outline of what I just spelled out. So when someone comes in my office for pelvic floor dysfunction, I am ex uh, assessing them from head to toe in functionality of their body parts. Your, for example, issues with the shoulder impacts your hips on the opposite side, your hip on the other side. And your hip on the other side directly impacts the positioning of your pelvis. That's just a simple example. So how can I address your pelvic stability and pelvic floor dysfunction when you have what feeds that issue to begin with? The number one mistake I see in the treatment of pelvic floor dysfunction is the lack of focus on the whole system. We're too focused on this specific area by going digitally through the um, anus or vagina and with an attempt, best attempts, best intentions to address something that is simply responding to an external issues. Your breathing plays a huge role. And in my opinion, when it comes to pelvic floor dysfunction, the instructions on how to breathe are inaccurate, believe it or not. We talk about belly breathing when that's not done right either. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have not subscribed to the channel, this is your opportunity to do so. I do videos regularly. I produce one video a week, sometimes two videos a week on the subject here. And you have uh, my information in the description box if you wish to contact the office for more information. Thank you for watching. Thank you.